Hello YouTube, it's Rob from Maxwell's Grass Cutting Services based in the northeast of England. I hope everybody is well and having a, a great day. First of all, Happy New Year. Uh, it's 2022 and I hope everybody's well, fit and staying safe. And secondly, thank you. Huge thank you. Uh, reached 4,000 subscribers over the Christmas period. I'm absolutely blown away. Thank you to everybody who watches the channel, subscribes and comments. It means a great deal. Thank you. Now, today's video. I've had loads of emails um, and messages and uh, thank you. Um, Charlie's one and there's others who have sent really detailed uh, emails. Uh, and the question is, how do you start a business, a gardening business in 2022? Well, first of all, I'm not an expert. I run my own business here in the northeast of England. Um, and, you know, I earn a living from it, but I'm not an expert. I'm not the best gardener in the world. I'm not um, the best sort of lawn mowing, cutting, uh, weed and feed. I'm not a greenkeeper, that's what I'm trying to say. But I'm canny and uh, I'm a good all rounder and I earn a living from it. Um, so my channel isn't about being the best hedge cutter, the best gardener, the best lawn mowing person, the best weed and feeder. It's about you following me on my journey and hopefully we can, hopefully we can learn from it. Uh, so that's what I just want to put out there. I'm dead honest and what you see is what you get. But uh, how do you start a gardening business in 2022? Do you know what? what is the most difficult part about that? And it's for me, it's about getting started, making that commitment. Uh, and there's things you need, isn't there? You need equipment, first of all. You need marketing strategy, you need transport, and you need a little bit of determination and motivation to get it done. But first of all, what equipment do we need? Well, you need a mower, petrol, uh, self-propelled. I would buy a four-wheeler. I wouldn't touch a rear roller to start with. You need a leaf blower, a little handheld petrol one, and uh, you need a, a strimmer. Uh, a good strimmer, petrol strimmer. And then you need a few little tools, uh, edging shears and gardening uh, equipment, a hedge, maybe it's a hedge cutter, uh, uh, and that's it. And, and it's not a great deal, really, uh, in transport. And if you've got them, you have the ability, if you've got a little bit of know-how, because you have to have know-how, but trust me, you don't need to be an, an, an expert. If you can do your own garden to a high standard, you can do a customer's garden to the high standard, and then you'll learn as you go. So once you get your equipment, once you get your transport, you need a company name, right? And this is really important, marketing. Um, the reason people fail, in my humble opinion, is two reasons. One is because they're not motivated enough, they're not driven enough, and secondly is they get the marketing all wrong. Now, you can be the best gardener in the world, but if your marketing's crap and your customer service is crap, you're, gonna, you're going nowhere. You'll fail in the first year. So get your marketing right, okay? Um, I've done a video historically on marketing. You know, Facebook business page, Google business page, yell.com, free line on yell.com, and get yourself a web website. Now, if you're going to invest in you, a website costs 10 quid a month, and it gives you credibility. Get yourself on Google business pages, Google Maps, and when people type in garden or grass cutting in your area, they come to you, and that's 120 quid a year. So I'll put a link down. Get that marketing right. Get yourself on Facebook business page and start sharing your page with lots of pages in the area. You know, look at, I get questions and um, sort of messages from people saying, oh, you couldn't charge 30 quid for a loan in my area, Robert. I, I say, it's not that affluent. Well, I live in Low Fell in Gateshead. It's not affluent. It's nice, but it's not rich. Um, but within 20 minutes, if you put a, a pin in Google Maps and you do a 15-mile circumference of some nice areas there, target their Facebook groups. Like there's an area where I live not too far away called Darris Hall. It's where the footballers live. They've got about 15 Facebook groups in Darris Hall. I've managed to blag membership to about 10 of them. And I don't market it as much now because I've got lots of customers, but I used to put posts on these uh, groups uh, once a week and uh, the work came flooding in, it really did. So you get your marketing right, get your communication right with your uh, customers. Uh, you get a customer, you do on a Monday um, and what you do on a Sunday night. Hello there, I'll be there tomorrow morning to mow the lawn, approximately 10 a.m. Look forward to seeing you, kind regards, Rob. Bang. So they get that communication. That's key. So you've got your equipment, you've got your transport, you've got your marketing, you've got your customers. 
um, and then it's about getting the motivation to get out there, get looking smart, get a uniform and just be on time, be professional and just, you know, don't look a, like a bag of spanners, look, look like you're interested and look like you want to do a good job and that's half the battle mine. Um, now, another question I get asked uh, about running your own business is, I have a job now, is it best for me to um, just quit? quit my job and start well, that's a tough question and it's personal to you because you need to ask yourself how much money have you got in the bank have you got enough money in the bank to uh, give yourself a buffer before you start bringing the money in if you haven't what I would do is I'll start your business and start it where you build enough customers up for maybe one day can you go reduced hours can you work after hours in the summer or can you do it on a Saturday and then build your customer base up for that first year, yeah? And then maybe go reduced hours to a point where you work just two days a week instead of five days a week. So you've always got that little bit of money. Or have you got the ability when winter comes to go back full time to your position and then reduce hours again ne the next season? Because in my opinion, it takes two years to build up a client base where you've got enough clients to make money to survive the 12 months of the year really important you need to get those clients in and also you need to ask yourself will i enjoy it because i love it i love it during the summer when you're out grafting the sun's shining you've got the sun cream on you it's really it's amazing it's not so amazing in the summer mind uh we're now mid-january and i find it difficult to get motivated to go out and do work um and i haven't got a lot of work on um i've got uh, i'm lucky enough i've got a new contract we do one day a week and I've got another contract where I do one day a month and then a couple of apartment blocks where I do one day a month. So during the winter, I'm quiet. Um, but you make enough during the summer months to uh, know what your income is per year and then you spread it over the 12, the 12 months and then that will increase as the, year go, the years go on. Another question is, what mower should I buy? Should I buy second hand or should I buy brand new? Well, you know what, that's personal to you. With my experience, I started off with an old 16-inch push Honda Izzy, um, and then it fell to bits. It was one I had for years. It was one I used on my own gardens, and I bought a 4 before McCulloch. lasted about six months, and it struggled. I bought then a Hater 48 Pro. I've never coughed that job before, and it was horrendous. Rear rollers, they're just... They're not versatile enough for all your lawns. And then I went on and got a Honda HRX 537, which was truly amazing. If I could have my time again, I'd buy the Honda straight away, the HRX, and I'd start with that. But like everybody else, I was a bit cautious about spending a lot of money because I wasn't sure I'd get customers. But believe you me, you will get customers um, if you put all the systems and processes in place, if you work hard, if you're professional, if you enjoy yourself, you turn up on time, you get your marketing right, you get your transport right, get some nice equipment and just, just convey to the customer that you want to be there and you want to do a good job and get your Facebook pages right and the work will come flooding in. I promise you, it will. My phone never stops. The gardening season starts, in my humble opinion, um, probably the third week in March after the Cheltenham Festival which is St Patrick's Day after then that's when you start cutting the grass weather permitting and you can go all the way up this year I was still mowing lawns middle of November we had a really mild summer mild autumn should I say and then uh, it went really cold um, and the wind and the, the, the work drops off but I had a good year last year and um, you know, I think everybody had a good year last year. The COVID uh, situations mean that people are spending money in the gardens. So now is a really good time to start your business. Another question, when would you start it? Today. Start today. Start planning. Because if you start in April, you miss the boat. Because everybody, your phone will start ringing in March and people want new gardeners. But what you've got to do is you've got to get systems and processes put in place now. Get your marketing right, get your Facebook, get your uh, website so people see a little bit of history there. And then you've got to go out. The first couple of years are tough because you've got to go and price jobs, price jobs. Now, I've, I don't really, I don't need any more work for this co coming season. 
you know i've got enough to do I, I used to do four days a week monday tuesday thursday friday and the wednesday was left for one off or rainy days now i'm almost full for the five days uh, and that's really you know it took me a good few years to get there but you'll, you'll get there as well but you just need a bit of determination bit of motivation bit of drive and a bit of hunger to be successful uh, am i successful I don't think so. I think I just, I, I work for myself. I've built up a business and, and I earn a living and I enjoy what I do. Is that success? Well, if it is, I am successful. I don't have people working for me. I'm not a millionaire, but I'm happy in, in, in what I do. And um, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, my wife works for the NHS. She's uh, in a hospital 40 hours a week. I don't think she's happy there. Uh, am I happy when I'm working? Yeah. So if success is happiness, I think I'm successful. But thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope that's cleared up a, a few questions. Oh, last point, tax. I'm not an expert on tax. Get yourself an accountant. Go on. I'm going to put a link in the description of a YouTube channel I follow of a guy who's an accountant and he does five minute videos and I've watched about 30 of them and it's taught me so much. I'm not an expert on it, but watch the videos of the link I'll put in the description and just watch his channel and um, he will uh, teach you something. But get an accountant. They'll explain it. They're the experts because I could say something and it could be wrong and I wouldn't want to give wrong advice. But when you run in your own business, you become an expert or let's just say a semi-expert in a lot of areas. It's not just gardening. It's not just mowing lawns. It's not just hedge trimming. It's about keeping records, keeping your books, you know, putting your tax returns in. And, and it's all a learning curve and it's a very steep learning curve. But if you want to go on the journey, my advice is get it done. You know, there's one thing, it's a saying, and I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to say this correctly, but it's my interpretation. Don't sit here in a year's time regretting what you didn't do. That means get it done today. Get out there, start your business and start your journey and follow mine, please. Please like and subscribe. And if you need any sort of advice, drop me a message. If you need any sort of questions answered, put them in the comments, because there's some great people who watch this channel, far more experienced than me. And uh, they do answer your questions, they jump on it, which I'm, you know, I'm over the moon and it, you know, it's really good to see. And I read the uh, comments and I learn from them. So having a YouTube channel has helped me a great deal in my business journey and hopefully it can help you. So that's it for today. I've waffled on for far too long, but uh, all the people who have emailed me about how to start your gardening business in 2022, I hope this has helped and I wish you well on your journey. I really do. And I wish you all a huge success. There's plenty of work out there for everybody and uh, do it right and you will be successful. Okay, thank you. Remember though, when the green gold's growing, keep mowing. Take care. See you next time. All the best.